Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Praise to God. Everyone, let's stand together as you're able. And let's say together, Lord, you are good. Lord, and your mercy endureth forever. Let's say that again. Lord, you are good. And your mercy endureth forever. March 26th, 
This is a Zoom meeting and will begin promptly at 5 p.m. The church is seeking and looking for a minister of music. Please contact Ms. Patricia Wallace for additional information. Our spiritual enrichment classes are still ongoing. We have classes that begin on Tuesday at 6.30, Wednesday at 12 noon. Pastor Stetson's Lenten Bible study is at 6.30. And the children's Bible study is this Friday at 6 p.m. These are all of the announcements for the morning, but I would ask that we continue to pray for our sick and shut-in. We especially send out a prayer for Crystal and hope that she's progressing along. These are the announcements for this morning, and thank you. Amen. Good morning, everyone. I'm Bernita Waller, and I am going to lead us in our vision. And you know, it is said biblically, without a vision, the people perish. Amen. So we are we are blessed that we do have a vision that we can keep in our hearts and mind, and that can be a part of what makes this church what it is. So the East Point First United. East Point First Malibu United Methodist Church vision is, and you know it, so say it with me, to be the light of Christ spiritually, physically, and relationally in the city of East Point and beyond. And it's also my task this morning to point out the seven ways to give. I know that you know those too, but we like to lift them up each and every time. First, you can go to the website which is epfmumc.org. You can also text to give at 56404-567-5052. Or if you are tech savvy and like the Manco Faith app, please use that. There's also the church's mail slot, which is on West Forester Avenue. Uh, there is the U.S. postal mail that you can use, but please, if you do that, use a check. Do not send any cash. And you can always uh, check with your bank and establish a recurring option that sends a certain amount of money to the church each designated period that you say it can come. And of course, our seventh way is the fact that you're here. So in person is our seventh way of giving. We take this time also to lift up a prayer of thanksgiving to the Lord. So if you would bow your heads with me. Dear Heavenly Father, when someone gives so much, ordinarily we as humans feel so astonished and overwhelmed that we wish to find a way to give something back to them. But this is just our following your example. Because out of your abundance, out of your abundant love flows all our blessings. We would not have anything without that love. We sometimes forget that it is actually your love that is keeping us going, the grace that you give us that means that we don't have to have anything, but you have everything. And in turn, it would be so nice if we would be willing to give back just a little to show that we really care and we really appreciate everything that is done for us. Each and every blessing does not have to do with a dollar sign. It has to do with the fact that we're here, we're breathing, we're alive, we're well. And it also doesn't have to do with the dollar sign in terms of what we can give back to you. We are in desperate need of workers in the church who would give their time and service and their treasure too. So we thank you, Lord, for all that you are doing for us, for all that all the ways in which you are blessing us. Thank you for our health. Thank you for our family. Thank you for our friends. Thank you for our church. Thank you for jobs. Thank you for the most part that this world is at peace. There are some fair up places, but for the most part, thank you, Lord, for the peace that you give that flows way beyond all our understanding. And we do say thank you, bless you, and Lord God, hear our prayer. We thank you. Amen.
live on high. My 
until Major General Gordon Granger arrived in Dallaston, Texas. On June 19, 1865, Major General Granger publicly read Order No. 3, which proclaimed all enslaved persons free based on then President Lincoln's having signed the Emancipation Proclamation effective January 1, 1863. That proclamation declared all enslaved people in southern states free. Thus, those who had remained working on Texas plantations learned on June 19, 1865, that they had been illegally held as slaves for almost three years. As a result, the formerly enslaved, once free, a year later in 1866, began to celebrate the day they learned they were a free people. Eventually, with relocation and migration of people from Texas to other states, some cities, towns, and states celebrated Juneteenth, Juneteenth on a local basis. However, Miss Opal thought that that day should be celebrated on a national basis. Miss Opal began talks and walks advocating that for that to happen nationally. She describes herself as having finished college, gotten a master's degree, taught school, worked as a social worker, helped establish a group bank serving 500 families, worked on a farm, and a lot more all while being a mother and wife. But in her 80s, she felt she should be doing more. So at age 89, again, so at age 89, she began a walking campaign to go from her home in Fort Worth, Texas to end in Washington, D.C. Even though that particular effort did not get her to D.C., she did log 1,400 miles towards that goal. Wow. However, that campaign did draw attention to the importance of the June 19th day. Seven years of organizing walks and talks with a team of dedicated supporters did get results. The main result 
was her being present to see President Joe Biden sign the Juneteenth National Independence Day Act into law on June 17, 2021. That made Juneteenth the first new federal holiday since the MLK Junior Birthday Holiday was, was created in 1983. Having the holiday established was especially personal to Ms. Hogan. On June 19, 1939, Ms. Opal's family suffered a, suffered a very traumatic event. On that day, the family home was set on fire by white rioters. With more than 500 people in the mob, it was a number the police could not control. Yet the police threatened to turn Miss Opal's father over to the mob if he used his gun to defend his family and property in any way. That incident remained in her memory and inspired and continues to inspire her activist spirit. Before and since the Juneteenth holiday was made official as a national observance, Miss Opal makes a symbolic two and one half mile walk each year to honor the two and one half years it took for news of the Emancipation Proclamation to reach Galveston, Tennessee. We salute the perseverance of Ms. Opal Lee for her advocacy and perseverance so that we can now have an official Juneteenth national holiday. Ms. Opalee's activism represents why the month of March has been established as an annual time, as, as an annual time period to acknowledge the achievements and accomplishments of women so long overlooked. So today we certainly do salute Ms. Opalee for her continued endeavors to make Juneteenth a national holiday. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Renee Solomon, and I will be reading the scripture reading today comes from Matthew chapter 8 verses 1 through 17. When Jesus came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed him. A man with leprosy came and kneeled before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately he was cleansed of his leprosy. Then Jesus said to him, see that you don't tell anyone, but go. Show yourself to the priest and offer the gift Moses commanded as a testimony to them. When Jesus had entered the Capernaum, Cap uh, Cap a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed, suffering terribly. Jesus said to him, shall I come and heal him? The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes, and that one come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, truly I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, 
Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside into darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go, let it be done just as you believed it would. And his servant was healed at that moment. When Jesus came into Peter's house, he saw Peter's mother-in-law laying in bed with a fever. He touched her hand and the fever left, and she got up and began to wait on him. When even came, many who were demon-possessed were brought to him, and he drove out the spirits with a word and healed all the sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up our infirmities and bore our diseases. Let us pray. The word of God, the people of, of God. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. The amazing power and work you do in our lives. Thank you for your goodness, mercy, and grace. We are so grateful for your healing power and for your abundant blessings you bestow upon us. Lord, we thank you that you are able to bring hope through even the toughest of times, strengthen us for your purposes. Forgive us for when we don't thank you enough for who you are, for all that you do. Thank you, Lord, for renewing our spirits and filling us with your peace and joy. We give you praise and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, 
Even in my weakness, I still have the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Great I Am, the Great I Am, my El Shaddai. The great provider, the great I am. My awesome ruler, my great redeemer. God, you are everything I need. Cause even in my weakness oh, I'm grateful that in my weakness oh, Thank you Lord That even in my weakness I still Jesus this morning and yeah. indeed we are honored to be amongst the living one more time. Yeah. We mustn't take it for granted That's because right. I don't because I didn't do anything so good on yesterday to be here today. Well, It's merely because of God's grace. Yeah. JC, bless you. I just want to say JC, I I, I felt like I was in church yesterday with JC. He was he was playing at a memorial service, and you all have to understand JC get the spirit moving in <laughs> every now and then. So thank God for you, brother. Amen. And our sister that was singing today, what's her name? Della. I thought he was saying Della Reese, Della <laughs> Davis. Amen. And, 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 and you were singing songs where the old church, I would oh, yeah. see the ladies cry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. some would start dancing yeah. because of merely what you were saying. God is God. Yeah. And we thank God for you and for your spirit Amen. and for allowing us to experience this worship experience with you. Amen. We thank Brother Trey for worshiping with us and allowing our family at various locations to be here. But, but I wanna tell our families that I've experienced virtue and I've experienced in person. And it's nothing like being in person. Because God said, let us not forget to gather ourselves together with believers. But God bless you and God bless each of you. Brother Waverly, uh, God bless you. And, and to our scripture reader, uh, Sister Renee, bless you. You read that scripture just now. It was printed and intended to be read. That's how Matthew wanted it to be read. Amen. And Barbara Brown, God bless you. And all of this, I'm not going to be long this morning. Uh, Barbara Brown, pastor, 
says something about Oprah, and Oprah was from Fort Worth, Texas, and I had a memory when she said Fort Worth, Texas. I had a close friend, uh, General Rooney, a bison brother that was from Fort Worth, Texas, and he was an angry brother. And I can see why, because of what Oprah's family experienced, and it was passed down through generations, but he had a good heart. We thank you for that history, and we thank uh, our own uh, Sister Bernita. Amen. God bless you. Amen. And we always say the last for the best, our pastor. And pastor, I didn't mean to mess up your head when I was hugging you your hair. I hugged him out. And he jumped. He didn't want me to mess that hair up. And we thank God for you. We have an intergenerational congregation today. And, and that's a blessing. That's what we need. Uh, intergenerational. I uh, am just so blessed as for us to be here, and let me haste on because we have a little work to do, amen? Right. amen. And, and before I start, I'm not going to preach this morning, I'm going to teach. I, I, I think we need a little teaching every now, pastor preach and teach, but I want to teach this morning and thank pastor for letting us know to have our Bibles in a pencil. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Because I stopped by to let you know you are preparing for a test. Come on. <laughs> Life is a test. So have your pencil, your paper, and your Bible as we worship together this morning. Let us bow our heads in a moment of silence and meditation. And then we shall commence to pray. Let us pray. For God indeed you are good to us. Not just sometime, but all the time. Yes. You're better to us, God, sometime than we are better to ourselves. So we pause and with humility to just thank you. Thank you. Thank you just for being God. And now God, as we continue to worship you and pray that everything that we have done thus far in this service, that it has been pleasing in thy sight. Yeah. Now God, let self decrease. Speak to me, God, so that I would have a word to know thy way. Let self decrease and your Holy Spirit increase so that we may be a shining example, a light to this congregation and this community. It is always in your blessed name we pray and believe. In every heart the love of the Lord said, Amen. 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 Now how this go, church, is that I have about 30 pages. And I, I think if I can do each page in a minute, I think I'll have it. Amen. I have them here, and, and I have them here. So if I can get some amens with this book, Pastor, uh -huh. I would need to get this book. <laughs> because I'm thinking that if you're not getting the gist of what God is saying to us, we don't want you to leave without knowledge and information. So my brothers and sisters, this morning as we celebrate through worship on this fifth Sunday of Lent, I remind you that Lent is a six-week season in the Christian year prior to Easter. That's right. 
Lent commemorates. It commemorates the 40 days Jesus Christ spent fasting in the desert and enduring temptation by Satan. Today as we celebrate, Lent is to be in our remembrance the love of God and, and that he poured out, the love that he poured out through Christ Jesus on the cross in his death. And his defeat of death, as we celebrate, we should remember his defeat of death and his resurrection. Thank you, Jesus, that brings us eternal light. So as we celebrate this morning, I want to intrude on each of you with the question just for a moment. Mm -hmm. The question is, is your soul anchored in the Lord? Is your soul anchored in the Lord? For you see, when we process this question, I believe it must take some careful reflection when providing a sincere answer. Personally, when I think of the question, I think about a recent situation in my life. I was confronted with a situation in my life just a week ago. The situation, Pastor, it frightened me, and I began to focus more on the situation and honestly had become fearful. Truth be told, the times and days in which we are living, it can easily disturb our peace and our calmness. The times in which we are living, it can easily distort our faith. We're experiencing deaths of friends and families and loved ones. Uh, we're experiencing the post-COVID experience where people are still trying to get together. And, and we began, though, sometime to use our intellect and our skills and our talents, and yet the problem continues to persist. And, and, and we never quite realized that something that we worry about are out of our hands. Oh, you all don't hear me today. Things we are worrying about sometimes, they're out of our control. But let me share with you, I'm learning and practicing a simple yet so complicated task during this Lenten season. The task is to do which is to let God let go and let God. Amen. Let go and let God. You, you, you see, I'm practicing this Lenten season is, is, is to stop doubting so much. All right. I'm practicing to having a prayer and spirit and keep Jesus on the main line, Sister yeah, yeah. Edie, and having the confidence built in with faith to call him out. Yeah. Whenever I need him. Yeah. See, when storms come into our lives, if my soul is not anchored in the Lord, mm -hmm. my faith in Jesus vanishes. Well. My prayer life becomes frail, and, 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 and a storm can almost make you forget about God. Mm -hmm. And it begins to... assist you in taking things in your own hand. See, I may not have a congregation that take things in their own hands. I, I may not have people on virtue that try to fix things themselves, but <laughs> Brother J.C., you know, I'm a fix it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I learn when I try to fix it myself, I mess up more things than I fix. That's right, come on. This morning, I want to remind us that Jesus can fix any storm in your life. However, when we look here at the Word of God and go deep in the scripture reading in which our friend Sister Renee read in Matthew 8, 
See, brothers and sisters, we must search for the most salient, significant points. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We must search to hear what the word of God is saying to us in this scripture. We must figure out whom the recipients are for this, this scripture and, and, and see how this scripture relates to me. And we must work towards coming to an understanding when we study the word like scripture has directed us to do. It says we must study to show our self-approval. Look, look what, what Timothy was telling in the church, and, 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 and we must become a workman, a workwoman that needed not to be ashamed so that we can rightly divide the word of truth. That's right. See, too many people are getting scammed because they don't know a game from the truth. Well, well, well. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Matthew was writing to the Jewish Christians. He was writing as an apology, you, you, you know, against the objections and, and making a false and defamatory statements about someone in order to damage their re reputation. Mm -hmm. See, he was, he was trying to correct himself. See, Matthew was a tax collector and he was charging people more taxes than they were supposed to pay. Well, and, and, and he was outcasting them. But I'm reminded, open your Bibles, here we go. I'm reminded in Matthew 8, 1 through 4. Do you see that? Yeah. I'll write it down, Matthew 8, 1 through 4. Mm -hmm. let, 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 let me put this together. Somebody say amen. 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 All right. All right, Jesus told them to get on the boat, and some people decided they weren't getting on the boat. But do you know there was a reason why they didn't get on the boat? Mm -hmm. But, but we're going we're gonna to come through that. Matthew 8, look what it says, my brothers and sisters. Matthew, the 8th chapter. Jesus healed a man with leprosy. Mm -hmm. See, Pastor, the word had gotten out that Jesus was in town. Well, it had gone all over the place that they were doing some church at Malibu. Well, <laughs> but see, more than the pastor has to be out there telling people about what Jesus can do. That's right. Yeah. See, see, when 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 word got out, there was nine one one, and, and then the leper. See, you have to understand this scripture. You have to understand a leper. Jesus heals a leper that was feared and segregated. He was outcast because of his condition. Yeah. See, sometimes we outcast people that's different from us. Yeah. See, I can't speak for you. But, 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 Sister Della, I know I used to. You, 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 you know, if they didn't want sharp and looking good and smelling good, I, I didn't want to deal with them. But then Jesus heals a leper that was feared and segregated and, and, and one through four and five through 13. Look what happens in five through 13. Do you have your Bible? We're just going to skim over it because this is your assignment to read chapter 8 and let it speak to your heart. Yes. But look what happened, Sister Barbara, in 5. When Jesus arrived in Capernaum, a Roman officer had the nerve to come and plead with Jesus. See, see a Roman officer was one that, that, that when Jesus was being crucified, see, a Roman centurion was at his crucifixion. A Roman officer had a different religion persuasion. Pray with me, Pastor. I'm almost there. Because, see, somebody was always observing 
what Jesus was doing earlier on. And, and, and the man overseeing Jesus' crucifixion was a Roman centurion, one of lower rank. And then in 8, 14 through 7, Jesus heals many people. Yeah. Jesus healed many people. It says here, my brothers and sisters, that evening, many demon-possessed mm -hmm. people were brought to Jesus. See, see, I can't speak for nobody else, Brother John, because, see, I know what it means to be demon-possessed. All right, come on. <laughs> come on. Demon-possessed when you can't love those that deceitfully use you. Well. See, demon-possessed when you always have an excuse not to do something. Demon possessed is when people don't go along with you when you know you are wrong. Well, well, but you're demon possessed, you still want them to partake. Jesus healed me one day. He healed me because that song my mother used to sing, I surrender all. Yes. All to Jesus I surrender. I used to see the old saints when they sung that song, they started crying and weeping when this song was being sung. They started crying and weeping, and I didn't know what they were crying and weeping for. See, church, when you follow Jesus, you have to give up something. Yeah. You have to give up something, and, and, and we get into that scripture now. See, see in 8, chapter 8, 3, 18 through 22. See, my wife hasn't said amen yet. That's, that's her way to say amen. She hasn't even said amen. She, but when she say amen, but look, look what happened. It's, see, it's a cause to follow Jesus, church. It's a cause. When Jesus noticed how large the crowd was growing, when he noticed that people were coming from everywhere, I noticed when the sister was saying in praises to God, she was using everything. And when you're working for the Lord, like Pastor Stinson, I understand why money is his Sabbath. Because it exerts you. You are tired and see, Jesus was not only God, Jesus was human as well. But Jesus saw the crowd gathering and, and, and he thought after a while that maybe I just need to take a break. But I'm reminded that Jesus said something to the people, Brother Don. He told his disciples, he said, let's go on the other side. Yeah. See, the people knew in order to get on the other side, they had to go through the Sea of Galilee. See, Jesus waited until the sun had gone down, and, and, and he knew the danger of traveling on the Sea of Galilee anyway. So I'm reminded when the sun went down, Jesus and his disciples were getting on the boat, and somebody said, wherever you go, Jesus, I will follow you. Yeah. Do you remember when you joined the United Methodist Church and you took your vows and you said that you would do this and you would do that, but storms come in your life? You, yeah. Not in this church, but churches that I've pastored. People didn't like me because I was the pastor. You, you see, none of you all are like that because our pastor is loved by everybody. Pray with me, church. I'm almost there. Be because, uh, Sister Ernestine, look what happened. See, see, Jesus knew the possibility of what was going to happen on the Sea of Galilee. And I'm reminded that sometimes people have to disappear in order for God's work to get done. Yeah. I'm on this thing. I don't care what you say. John, I'm there. You, 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 you see, because let me explain, let me set the picture. See, the Sea of Galilee is, 
it's, it's, it's at the lowest point. It's, it's the lowest freshwater lake on earth. And it was a body of water where hurricanes and storms will exist at any time. And mostly during daytime when it's cool and, and the cool breeze will flow from the mountains and hit the warm water and stir it up and cause a hurricane at any time. So the people knew that. They didn't want to go in the danger water. See, there's too many church people want to stay in the shallow water where it's safe. But see, we are living in a life today where nowhere is safe. See, a hurricane can exist anytime. I asked old Don to sing this song, and I'm there now. I asked him to sing that song by one of our friends. And I can't sing it this morning, but I know the lyrics. The lyrics say, though the storms keep on raging in my life. See, you all may not. Did you sing that? <laughs> though it's time, so though at times it's hard to tell the night from day. But there is a glimmer of hope within me. That's the word. That reassure me. That calls me to keep my eye on the distant shore. You, 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 you see, my brothers and sisters, they were sailing on the Sea of Galilee. Imagine with me just for a while. And Jesus was exhausted and he decided to go to sleep and, and he came to a place on the boat that was separated from the people. See, you always have to keep Jesus in your sight. You can't let him get in a distance. He has to always be right in your heart at all times. But I'm reminded that the water started roaring and, and we had some fishermen on the boat and, and they tried to use their intellect as for us to stop the water from roaring. Water got in the boat. And see, sometimes water gets in our life and water can destroy things. But then I'm reminded that they couldn't stop it. They couldn't stop it. But somebody in here has been on that boat and they have seen and witnessed what God has done in their life. See, somebody on that boat, I, I know they were reminded that on the other side, they saw Jesus heal a leper. I know somebody in that boat, and when they were on the other side, pray with me, church. See, they saw Jesus healing and rebuking demons out of people, making them whole. And that person said, go and wake him up. Well, See, we got to wake Jesus up. Yeah. See, I don't know about you, Wendell. When everything is happening good in my life, it scares me. <laughs> it scares me. I'm waiting. Hey, it scares you. And, 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 and I'm reminded that they went and woke Jesus up. But look what happened. When Jesus came to the front of the boat, for you fishermen, done, you know that you don't stand up in boats. Jesus came and stood up and, and admonished the people. He admonishing me today. He may be admonishing you today. Why are you afraid? He didn't only calm the water. He stopped the water. And when he stopped the water, the people on the boat fear had diminished and they became fearful of God. Look what they said. Look at the last thing they said. Look what the disciples said. When Jesus said, why are you afraid? You have so little faith. Then he stood up and rebuked the wind. This is in the 26th. And waves and suddenly everything was calm. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and you see how 
that situation there, it, it changed from the fear of the storm to the fear of God. Well, the disciples just sat there in awe. And you know what awe is? Awe is worshiping. See, we don't have the pleasure of being in the midst of God physically. We have more of an advantage. We have this story. See, see, we have the Holy Spirit, and, yeah. and, 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 and we have, my brothers and sisters, church family that can witness to us about how God has been to them. That's right. The disciples just sat there and are. Who is this, they said. They're not worrying about the water anymore. They said, who is this? I'm going to tell you why they said that, and I'm finished. They said that because, see, when you read and study the scripture, it, 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 exposed, it exposed my sin. Y'all don't hear me. See, it exposed my shortcomings. It exposed what I'm not and who I should be. See, the scripture, when you study it, it exposed what I need to do that what I'm not doing. It exposed how I should be. And the disciples saw Jesus just held his hand and say, peace, be still. But I stopped by to let you know, I heard my timekeeper say amen, so I'm not going to use this one. <laughs> you, you see, how does it look when your soul is anchored in the Lord? Imagine with me in our closing. You may be going through a storm today, but I stopped by to let you know that we have a book here that, that no one had made it without a storm. Mm -hmm. See, I'm reminded of Job. Job had lost family members. He had lost possessions, and, but yet Job was relaxed. See, you got to learn to be relaxed. When your friends be in your ear, the naysayers, Joel, they was telling Joel, man, you should just curse God. You're going to lose everything. I'm glad I don't have a wife that was speaking to me like Joel's wife. He said, you should curse Jesus. Something you're doing is not right, but I stopped by to let you know that Joel said, God give it and God take it away. Bless be the name of the Lord. How does it look? How does it look, my brothers and sisters, when your soul is anchored in the Lord? I'm reminded of the Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. See, they were in Nebuchadnezzar's palace, and Nebuchadnezzar, do you remember Nebuchadnezzar had put them in this den and had said to them, when this trumpet blow, I want everybody to bow. See, it's too many of us bowing to Nebuchadnezzar's sound. But I stopped by to let you know that, that, that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were not only relaxed, they remembered from their past their teachings. They remembered that they would say every morning, love the Lord God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and God will protect you. They remember their teachings from Bible study and Sunday school. See, we don't have a Sunday school right now. We got to get on that. We got to get on the Sunday school. It, even it's just for little Hebrew boys. All right. Or little black girls and boys. Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego wouldn't bow. They wouldn't bow because they remembered their past. They remembered their teachings and, and they had a knowledge to know that if God can't do it, if God can't save me, if God can't rid this storm that Nebuchadnezzar tried to impose upon me, nobody can. But I stopped by to let you know that when the horn blew, they didn't bow. They stood up and it infuriated the enemy. See, the enemy is kind of okay with the church right about now. All right. See, y'all don't hear me. It's really bad. 
But see, Matthew was a tax collector and he made the numbers more than what they really were. That's why I like him. He made it a reality. He made everything real. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they didn't stand and Nebuchadnezzar turned the heat up. See, the heat is up on us now. And, and what happened, they still stood for the Lord. And Nebuchadnezzar said, I thought you put three in there, but there's four in there. Jesus will come to your rescue if you trust and obey. If you learn to relax and remember what God has done for you. Remember the stories where he healed the lepers. He healed the Roman soldier's little daughter. And he healed Peter's mother. God can do everything but fail. But I stop by to let you know you have to relax and remember what God has done for you. And when you do that, stay in the word. And then you'll recognize that Jesus soul is anchored in the Lord. Amen. How does it look when your soul is anchored in the Lord? See, let me tell you something. Jesus was God. And at one point, everybody began to not pay attention to Jesus. They were disobedient. Pastor, I always, when I preach for a preacher, I always say something to try to help him. Mm -hmm. See, see, it wasn't that the people were disagreeing with Jesus as much as they were disagreeing with the power of God. Well. See, Pastor, when people come up against you, it ain't always about you. Don't take it personal. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you, 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 you know. Jesus said, God, what have you done to me? Why don't you remove some of these people? Well, but God sent all of us here for a purpose. God don't make mistakes. See, all of us here are here for a reason. We need to call those that's not here just to see how they're doing. See, that's how it looks when your anchor is in the Lord, your soul is anchored in the Lord, you stop caring so much about yourself and begin to care about others. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus' soul was anchored in God and he died. He died for a sinner like me. He died for a sinner like Deborah. And now we got a story to tell. Well, See, when you meet somebody at the grocery store, my last teaching word is this. We got to stop acting like we've been saved all our life. All right. <laughs> That's what kept me out of church so long. Because I said, that ain't come. <laughs> but then when I go to them, I want to know how they're doing. Has God been good to you? Well, Because I can remember that I was sinking in sin one day, sinking to rise no more. Right. Then the master and his love lifted me. Love lifted me. Yeah. Is your soul anchored in the Lord? Let us pray. For God, we have been posed a question among your people. We pray that which we have said. We pray that it is gone out and shall not be returned void. We have faith that it shall fall on good soil and we continuously work without fainting. Work towards becoming the people that God has so called us to be. Bless each one of us here and bless each one of us that's virtual so that we may continue this race and 
we may become relaxed and, and, and remember and recognize who is in control. Yeah. It is always in your name we pray and believe yeah. and every heart that had faith shouted amen. 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 You're going to sing that song, Della? You got to know, huh? You don't know that one? All right. Where are we now? As a musician, play softly. We now open the doors of the church. We invite Della to come and let God use her. And if there's one here today in our presence that would like to rededicate their commitment in life to God, let them come. And if there's someone receiving our service virtue, let them call the church office, ask for our pastor, and become a member of this fellowship. We're waiting for you. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Let us stand as we receive our closing selection by Sister Della and Brother J.C. Before we do that, give God a hand. I pray for the Matthew and the Matthew Church. I thought he said he was going to teach and not preach. I think he managed to do both. I'm going to give God a hand. I pray talking about messing up my hair, I'm gonna mess up his too. Okay? But I do want to know where he got those suede shoes from. He was about to clean the thing. We got a lot coming up at the church. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday and we will be worshiping back in our sanctuary, everybody. So come on back. We're gonna get in our lovely sanctuary. We're gonna worship in there. Uh, Monday, Thursday service is going to be at the East, at, excuse me, Hapeville First United Methodist Church at 6 o'clock. We will have the seven last words here with Gammon, Hapeville First, uh, and Poplar Spring United Methodist Church. We'll all be here on Friday, the 7th of April for our uh, last Friday, Good Friday, last seven words. And then, of course, Easter Sunday on the 9th, we want you all to come out and celebrate all that God has done for us. Come on, give God a hand type of praise for what he's doing here at the EPM. And I just want to thank my friend Del. I thank you for blessing us. Thank you for our giving, the talents that God has given you, blessing us with. Because that's what they're meant for. Thank you so much. So, Del is going to sing the last song, and then Brother Kent's going to come back and do the benediction.